Hi guys, Rose here with the Cackling Moon. This is going to be a client's L Soul reading. It was a little flash sale um, that I offered not too long ago, actually. Um, and we're going to be focusing on the sun energy, which is the sun is all about you. It is all about your present energy. It's all about who you are, your personality, all of the above. So um, that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Um, I'm just setting my table up here <laughs> so that I can have that ready to go. So I'm going to have my little spreads journal open um, because I'm going to be focusing on a spread that I created, which was the whole point of this beautiful reading. Um, so El Sol. And it's going to be um, done with a mixture of tarot, oracle, Tarot and Oracle. So um, now that I have the space created, ready to go. We will begin. I have a gorgeous, um, what's this called? Labradorite here. <laughs> As you can see, oh, let's see that flash. Um, Labradorite is really good for connecting with spirit, connecting with your psychic energies. Um, so I'm going to have Labradorite on the table. I also have a chunky uh, Smoky Quartz here. And Smoky Quartz is good for grounding. And I'm going to need that for some of these readings that I'm going to be doing today. So I have that set up. <coughs> I'm going to be working with the Rider Waite Tarot. My color cards. And the chakra reading cards. I really love these cards, especially when we're looking at the self and the energies of your of what you're bringing forward and all of that. So I really love chakra cards for that too. All right, so let's see. Um, I'm pretty much ready to go. Um, my client is, they basically don't have a, they don't have a specific question. My client was basically feeling a little out of sorts. They feel a little off their energy is a little off. Um, it may be also, um, having to do with a lot of turn of events that my client has been going through. Um, so I'm keeping that also in mind <coughs> when you're going through a lot of emotional stuff, you'll start to see it register um, in your personal life. So I'm also keeping that in mind. Um, but my client is kind of just, I feel like it's more of an energy boost that she's looking for. Um, I also feel like it's, it's a sense of how can she get, um, her mojo back? I was feeling that too. Um, when I feel like I'm losing my spiritual mojo, um, usually that's when I'll reach out to another reader for a reading or I switch up my reading, like the books that I'm reading on my own personal time. So based on my own personal experience for you, love, um, what helps me is changing the energy of the things that I'm working with around me. So if I'm constantly reading books about true crime, for example, um, I will switch that up. I won't read true crime. I will start reading about other topics. I will maybe a whole nother genre or a star start um, reading nonfiction versus fiction. Like little things like that. Um, I'll start changing the kind of TV shows I'm watching or the music. The music that I'm playing in the background. Like um, when I listen to music in the car or whatever. I'll, I'll switch that up too. Um, I'll boost my meditation sessions. So, you, you know, I'll try to meditate a little bit more. Um, the foods that I eat. So a lot of times when we're doing with, when we're dealing with like personal energy, um, those are some of the things that I notice I have to switch off, switch or, you know, switch up. So that's just something I wanted to put out there. You 
you also mentioned um, you're working on a book and because you're a writer. But that it's like that last portion of what you got to do before you finish it and publish it. Um, I want to say it's actually natural and it's actually better that you have kind of put pause on your, your, your writing and all of that. Um, I feel like that's a good thing um, because a lot of times when we are um, not in the best of spirits, when we are not feeling energetically charged and all of that, um, sometimes it's better that we don't go through with certain projects or completing certain projects or whatever because our energy is not in it and it's not authentic. So kind of take that as a blessing in disguise. You will pick it up. I feel like you're going to start picking it up in the next month. Um, but let's just get through the beginning of this, okay? Okay. So your present energy, let's start with the color cards because that's what flew out. Um, so the first portion is the sun, your present energy. Now, socialize, network, established boundaries came up. They also came up in the colors red and orange, which are the root chakra and the sacral chakra. Sacral chakra is your chakra of creation and creating. It's your motivation. It's your sexual passion or passion in general. So I really like that this one come, came up because obviously we were just talking about how you don't feel connected to finish your book or um, you just don't feel like you are like you're in the right mindset to be doing the things that you are normally creatively passionate about. So socialize and network is saying, you know, I feel like this is saying to kind of um, distract yourself at this moment, surrounding yourself with certain people in your network that inspire you. Um, it might also be a call for you to go through your friends list and unfollow people that no longer resonate with your true belief. Um, a lot of times when we are going through a need to kind of put a boost in our spiritual mojo, um, we have to kind of unfollow or separate ourselves or distance ourselves from certain people who maybe they're putting content out that no longer speaks to you. Maybe they're putting content that just doesn't align with you anymore. Then we have the root chakra, establish boundaries. And this is all about, <coughs> excuse me. This is all about resetting your boundaries. This is about you um, kind of like you're, your, I feel I'm getting the image of you're fertilizing your soil, okay? And your soil meaning your, your, your stable ground, the, the, the home life, your house, reorganizing. Perhaps I'm getting the feeling of needing to move furniture around or just going through a huge cleanse, Okay. I also hear spirit saying painting a room. So I don't know if that was something maybe you've been thinking about doing, but painting the walls in a room, perhaps changing the color or just tidying it up a little bit. So that's another thing that I'm getting. Okay. So for you right now in your present energy with the sun, um, you're dealing with the, both the root and the sacral chakra. Those are the two chakras that are very very much present for you right now, okay? Next, we have what needs to be left behind in the past. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Let me pull a, sh a chakra card for you, too. This one looks like I want to fly out. <laughs> Balance, and it's the root chakra. So, definitely your home life, okay? Your solid ground, your fertile ground. All of that needs to be balanced. It it's telling me that there needs to be a major cleanse taking place in your home. This is also in yourself, in your body, because your whole body, your your temple is, you know, you can look at that too as your as your fertile ground. Needs to be rebalanced. So perhaps you need to do some sort of energy work with yourself. Or if you know of somebody who does Reiki, I highly recommend getting a session. I am overdue for mine too. I've done, I had a Reiki session like two years ago. Um, and I told myself I was going to try to go at least once a month, once a, once a year. And I know it should be actually more than that, but, um, <laughs> it's been way overdue, but a Reiki session is someone will go through and just kind of clear out your chakras and realign your aura and cleanse your aura and, 
it's something that you have to really be spiritually, like you have faith in it um, in order to believe in it. But it's something that I found was very healing for me at that time. Um, so I recommend that. So I feel like that's something too. Definitely stuff going on with your root chakra, your home life, your, your home in general needs a little bit of a pick me up or a, a recharge. Okay. Um, so next we're going to be pulling what needs to be left behind. This is in your past. Woo, we got the devil card. So what's left behind the demons of your past? What are the things that were tempting you in not so positive ways? Um, devil energy is kind of like toxic stuff. So like I was saying earlier, um, how I was saying, I feel like you, you need to go through your following list, people you follow or people you allow to follow you who you no longer align with. I know sometimes you might feel bad to disconnect with certain people because maybe you do generally like them, but the content that they've been putting out, maybe you've noticed they've been very negative lately or you just haven't been vibing with some of the stuff they're posting. Don't ever feel bad to unfollow for those reasons. Sometimes we have to create our space, our online space to be very sacred to us. And if people are posting stuff that we don't want to see, or look at or read about or we just don't like um, you have every right to totally unfollow those kinds of things so stuff that's in the past this is like past drama these are toxic people that no longer have a um, have a place in your life leave them in the past um, I also feel like there's skeletons in the closet um, people that might be trying to come back into your life from the past who are very negative um, it's very important that you set boundaries. So that might be another one why your root chakra is saying establish boundaries in your home. Don't let these people or these energies come through. Your home is your sacred space. Okay. So whatever is in the past, your, your, um, your baggage, <laughs> whatever you've decided to leave in the past, whether this is like, this is stuff you decided to leave. I'm going to leave this last month. What we're talking about like the month of May or whatever previously in the year. This is stuff that should not come back up in your future, okay? When we decide to walk away and we maybe we forgive them, but we were walking away from it, you don't let them come back, okay? Um, how to radiate in your own way. So how to radiate in your own way. Ah, we have the Queen of Cups. So I love that. So let's pull her along with a chakra card because chakra energy, I feel, is um, good to see. How do you radiate in your own way? Ooh, you, <laughs> you got angels and masters. That's a beautiful one. It's like, it actually shows all of the, um, the chakras aligned and it shows the wings, which is symbolic for me for spiritual connection. So, um, how to radiate in your own way. To me, this is like the way you connect with spirit. Um, I know that you, you mentioned you lost your grandmother. So perhaps your grandmother is coming through in this way. Um, you know, that's your own personal way of connecting with her. When your energy is balanced, when you are fully aligned, you will feel her stronger. Okay. And perhaps grandma is very much queen of cups vibes. Maybe she was very heavily in the water sign. Maybe she was psychic of her own. Maybe she had intuition that she trusted or she she introduced you to certain things. Whatever the case may be, Queen of Cups also was very nurturing. Um, she was a listener, you know, that kind of thing. So if you associate Grandma with um, Queen of Cups, perhaps, you know, she's come stopping in and saying hello. But I also feel like it's kind of saying um, to radiate in your own way, being physically, spiritually, energetically aligned. I see this too. Um, but also I feel when you are aligned and you feel good, you, you, you're you going to be able to connect spiritually um, easily. So if you want to connect with grandma, you know, make sure that you're, you're aligned in that way. And you could do that. You could totally accomplish that by, um, doing meditations, working on your root chakra, cleaning out your home, and making sure that a lot of the negative toxic people that were once in your life are no longer in it, okay? Um, also, how to radiate in your own way, um, being like the queen of cups. That's the other thing I was going to say. 
being more like a queen of cups is, you know, trusting your intuition for one, but also being that nurturer, that lover, that um, peacemaker. Queen of cups is all about listening. Um, she doesn't do much of the talking unless she's giving advice, but she's more of a listener. Okay. She's peaceful. She's water energy, which is love and emotion and intuition. Okay. And also psychic. So you do the stuff, right? You read the cards and all of that. You embrace those pieces of you. That is how you radiate in your own way. You stand out from the crowd because you're aligned. You are spiritually awakened. You are into the stuff. So being yourself, basically. Um, what do I have to offer the world at this time? Ooh, <laughs> we have the five of wands. What do you have to offer the world at this time? Let's pull a color card too. Um, five of wands is very competitive nature, okay? So your competitive spark. I also feel like this is saying um, that you won't be easily swayed by other people's opinions of you or of your work. Um, you're always going to be fighting for what you believe in. I feel like that's also what the five of wands is saying. But I think it's just showing that you are, you are in it for the long haul. You know, you, you take your path seriously. You take yourself seriously. Um, you are going through a rough patch right now, my love. You're going through a time of feeling disconnected, maybe spiritually or just within yourself. But you know you're going to get through it because you are a fighter. Okay? A five of wands is a fighter. We also have communicate. I love it. So, um... <clears throat> what do I have to offer the world at this time? Your communication or your message, okay? This is you communicating the message to your clients through the readings, your message through your books and through your writing because you are a writer. Um, maybe it's spirit connection, you know? Maybe it's being able to communicate with grandma. Um, it could be a lot of different things, but communication, the throat chakra is very powerful for you. And that's what you also have the to offer the world. Um, the five of wands, not everybody is going to be your fan, okay? Not everybody is going to like or accept what you do, but you still do it because you're a fighter. Um, I also feel like you tap into a lot of the taboo and people don't always understand it, but you will always fight for what you feel is truly right for you and what is right for your family. Um, so you don't go down with a fight. <laughs> You are in it for the long haul. I feel like that's what spirit wants to say. Uh, the abundance that is coming your way in the future. Ooh, we have four of swords. Um, so four of swords to me, abundance coming your way in the future is more meditation, more spirit work. Okay. I feel like grandma is definitely going to play a big role in this with you where you feel her more intensely. Um, I also feel like it's, it's a lot of time, quiet time that's going to be coming up for you. So maybe not being visibly, you know, involved in a lot of stuff that's going on in, in the world. You may be finding yourself taking more of a step back. Okay. Um, it's when we take a step back or when we take a break from life, it's not always a bad thing. Um, sometimes it's necessary for our own sanity and for our own personal growth. Um, but there's abundance in that. So for this to be looked at as abundance, sometimes people might say, well, how is the four of swords abundant? You know, not much is happening. But there is a lot of abundance in your spiritual growth, um, in yourself, when you take quiet time. So maybe abundance for you coming up in the future is actually having peace and quiet, is actually having quiet time for yourself to refocus, to regroup. Um, maybe that's you know, golden for you. Some people see abundance in the form of being busy or having money or having a lot of clients. Whereas maybe for you, abundance is in the form of peace, peace and quiet. Okay. Let's put this down so you can see. <laughs> Where my focus should be this summer Ooh, nine of swords. So where your focus should be this summer? Um, I really, 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 really want to say take away the laundry list of worries and things that you feel like you're supposed to be doing this summer. Um, I am always like, 
you know, I love to be busy. I love to always have something to do, but I also feel like there's an importance when we need to take a step back and take a break. And I feel like that's maybe that's why this Four of Swords is showing abundance coming in your future because you have a lot of stuff on your mind already. You have a lot of stuff going on. You have a lot of energies around you. And I feel like what you need to do is um, get rid of it. Limit your laundry list of to-do things and enjoy the fact that summertime, you have kids, you know, it's time to enjoy family time. And sometimes if you're not always feeling like you are accomplishing a lot, it's okay. It is okay. So I really feel like I have to say that. I also feel like it's just um, your focus should be on limiting limiting things that you feel like you need to do, but also stress, okay? Learning how to de-stress and learning how to do other, like other ways of coping with stress, okay? That's a big one. Um, okay, so let's look at the Oracle Guidance. And Oracle Guidance is basically just like advice. <laughs> one from the bottom. Ooh, I love it. So we have listening and dreams. Beautiful. Listening and dreams. So listening is you are listening to what spirit around you. You're listening to any kind of message that might be coming through in the form of, you know, numbers, people, conversations that you might have with people, the cards that you pull for yourself, but really listening. And we do that a lot with our four of swords. So I feel like the abundance coming your way in the future with a lot of this extra quiet time, maybe this will be extra free time that you wouldn't normally have, um, that you take advantage of that. That could be the inspiring moment. This could be the moment where it turns for you, where you will feel inspired to finish the book or finish another project that you're starting, or um, it'll inspire you in other different ways. So I do feel like listening is a good one. It's That will come hand in hand with your meditation card. And then we pulled dreams. Um, I don't know about you, but for me, when, when I dream... <laughs> Um, sometimes I try to write it down. Like I try to write down what was in my dream, who was in my dream, what colors or, or animals or whatever, what feeling I had. Um, if you were having very strong, vivid dreams, write it down. Um, you may become one of those people where you will be able to interpret the messages in your dreams. I have yet to be that way. I have a lot of hard time. Um, understanding what the hell I'm dream <laughs> what the hell I'm dreaming about. Sometimes I, I I just dream about people that I feel like I've known forever, even though I've never met them in this present life, and I'm aware that that's probably a past life issue. Um, but I have yet to to been able to interpret my own dreams. So maybe that'll be something for you. Maybe that'll be a way you connect. Maybe grandma is gonna be connecting with you in that way. Um you never know. Motivate yourself. That's a big one too. That's the root chakra. Um, when it comes to like losing your mojo and just not feeling, you're like you're feeling out of sorts. You're not feeling like, like yourself. You're not feeling motivated. Motivating yourself is you're finding different ways to, to re-inspire who you are and what you do in your interest. So like I said, switching things up in your household, whether it's painting the room <laughs> or it's cleaning or organizing or, or whatever, it could also be the people you hang out with or like I said, the people's content that you're looking at on social media or the books you're reading or the TV shows you're listening to or the music you're, you're, you're listening to. It's really important that you kind of shift all of that. That's kind of how you start to motivate yourself. This could also be setting a small goal, you know. You don't have to be setting life-changing goals, but maybe motivating yourself in that way um, will spark your mojo to come back. Either way, um, I feel like the majority of this issue here is major um, root chakra. I feel like it's 
just a need for a shift in that, a cleanse, keeping a lot of the toxic people out of the life in the present, keeping them in the past. We don't need them coming back. And just really filtering. I feel like filters in me is another main word that was coming up with spirit is filtering out who you are connecting with, who you are allowing in your life, who are you viewing, who are you, you know, who are you following um, is another big one. So I really hope that this reading helped you. I hope it gave you something to think about. I hope it gave you something to consider. Um, I send you all of my love and I just hope that you are able to, to accomplish and, and achieve the goal of finishing your book. Um, and I just hope that you continue to, to be inspired in, in whatever way feels right for you. Thank you so much for allowing me to read for you, my love. And this is the L Soul reading. <laughs> um, and anyone who's watching, if you are interested in having a reading done with me, please, please, please click the link in the bio. Or I'm not the link in my bio, the, um, the link in the description box. Have a look at my online shop. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me in email or leave a comment below. Um, and I look forward to talking to you very soon. Bye, loves.